Halo Infinite currently has a pretty fun weapon sandbox in terms of the weapons that you can use in the multiplayer match. Both new inclusions like the Heat Wave or the Cinder Shot are a lot of fun to use, along with your choice of old classics like the Battle Rifle or the Sniper Rifle. However, though, there are some very notable exclusions in Halo Infinite, and as Halo Infinite's life goes on, I think it's inevitable that more weapons are going to be added to the game. So today we're going to go over 10 weapons from previous Halo games that should be added into Halo Infinite, and to help me with this, I have brought a Along fellow YouTuber Nikos, and he's gonna talk about some of his favorite weapons along with me. So let's hop right in. What's up, guys? It's Nikos. I've been invited to the channel today to share some of my personal favorite weapons from the Halo series and explain why they should be re added to Halo Infinite. Arash, thank you so much for having me on your channel today. Now the plasma rifle. Man, this weapon hasn't seen the light of day since Reach. It did see Halo 5 in the form of the brute plasma rifle. Well, fairly late into Halo 5's life cycle, but the classic symbol of the elites should definitely return. The current plasma rifle's replacement, or the pulse carbine, is awfully ineffective. Replacement with the plasma rifle could vary the sandbox more with players actually using the weapon due to its high fire rate and shield stripping potential. I would prefer the Halo CE variant be used because of its decent range and high accuracy, and it was just a beast. I loved using that. I mained the plasma rifle in Halo CE, but taking the Halo 2 and 3 variants would also be a really cool alternative, mostly due to the fact that they could be dual wielded, and if those and the SMG were added into Infinite, you could dual wield an SMG and a plasma rifle just like the good old days for that 1-2 combo. So let's see it, a useful plasma rifle styled weapon to finally re-enter the sandbox since they replaced it with that absolutely abysmal storm rifle. The Brute Shot. Oh, the Brute Shot. Anytime someone in my streams or in my comment sections ask me what is one of the weapons I think should be added into Halo Infinite from previous Halo games, the Brute Shot is always the first one that comes to my mind. And that's because of the versatility, the utility, the fun factor, basically everything about the Brute Shot. Just starting with the looks alone, I mean, look at this badass gun. It's basically a grenade launcher with a giant blade on it that obviously was used by the Brutes, who while we're talking about the multiplayer here, were one of the main enemies in the campaign, so it would make sense for one of their classic guns to make a return, maybe in the form of some DLC. Now what do I love so much about the Brute Shot? Well, what makes the Brute Shot so fun to use is just the fact that you can do so many cool plays with it that you can't necessarily do it with a lot of other guns in Halo. Obviously you can just shoot the grenades at people and melt them down that way if you can hit enough of the consecutive grenades, or you can hit them with one grenade and finish them off with a nice melee. Those are both very fun and pretty basic, but you can also do really cool things like using the brute shot to boost you up for a jump or just the way the brute shot shots kind of interact with the sandbox. If you played a lot of Halo 3 multiplayer back in the day, I'm sure you either had someone completely destroy your warthog with a brute shot by flipping it over repeatedly or you did that to someone else sending them well off the map flying with a good combination of shots. The brute shot is just a lot of fun and obviously it's a brute weapon so I think that it should definitely make its way into Halo Infinite. Here's the one y'all all expected, the classic shotgun. Now the bulldog is good and all, but let's be real, throw that thing in the garbage and give me an OG pump action again. Halo C started us off strong with a highly effective shotgun with a generous range and magazine size. And Halo 2 and 3, they mixed it up a little. They reduced the range of the shotgun, but they upped its damage output significantly at very close ranges. Energy sword wielders back in the day didn't always rule arena matches back then because they'd always have to keep an eye out for those shotgunners. Now those days are sadly over, and the day of the sword and hammer has arrived as the gravity hammer and energy sword easily outdo the bulldog 100% of the time. Infinite sandbox could be significantly improved with the return of the shotgun, but until then, boy, you better run for the hills when the enemy team has a sword. Next up, I'm gonna talk about the railgun. The railgun was added into the Halo franchise in Halo 4, and then it was also in Halo 5. For me, the railgun was one of the coolest kind of power weapons that 343 has added into the franchise, as I think it did a really good job rewarding skill while also not being completely overpowered or just overly easy to use. So depending on which game we're talking about, they function a little bit differently. Halo 4's bullets travel a little bit slower, whereas Halo 5's travel really fast and take a little bit longer to charge up. But basically the premise is the same. You charge up the railgun and then it shoots the projectile, and then if you hit the person you're shooting at, it obviously kills them. For me, I always found the railgun a really nice arena style power weapon, as it felt balanced as there was counterplay to it, because you could outplay someone while they have to charge it, or they could just completely 
completely end up missing and you could obviously kill them. On top of that, it also took some skill to use. If you knew you wanted to shoot someone that was pushing at you, maybe you had to time the charge up perfectly so you could peek around the corner as the charge up sequence was done, shoot them and take them out, as opposed to just standing in the open and charging it up. I found the railgun really rewarded player skill, it was satisfying to use, and I definitely think it's a gun that should make its return in Halo Infinite. I also think it would probably be fine in big team battle and not just arena, as you could play with its effectiveness against vehicles, maybe have it pretty effective against the lighter vehicles, but take away some of the effectiveness against the stronger vehicles in Halo Infinite, as you could leave that role to some of the other weapons in the sandbox. The submachine gun, or SMG, now this weapon was originally able to be used dual wielded in Halo 2 and 3, where you could have one in each hand. And while dual wielding hasn't been seen since those days, the SMG fortunately made a return in Halo 5 in all iterations absolutely shredded. SMGs in Halo have always been a personal favorite of mine, mostly due to the volume of fire someone could put out with them, and not just one but two of them in the earlier games. And Halo Infinite could use a few more close quarter firearms that could counter the sword, and the SMG would be perfect for that position. And a quick little side note is the silenced SMG from ODST could be added as well, and I'd actually like to see it happen because I want to see what 3 Four, three could come up with to implement stealth mechanics. Possibly each shot could diminish you from the motion tracker. Who knows? The sky is the limit. Now let's just see the SMG return already. So next up we have the grenade launcher. Now obviously we already did the brute version of the grenade launcher, but now we're going to talk about the human version of the grenade launcher. So we've seen the grenade launcher both in Halo Reach and Halo 5. Now obviously there's nothing too special or amazing about the grenade launcher in Halo. It's basically just a grenade launcher with two different firing functionalities. If you shot it normally, it would bounce off the floor and then explode on the next impact, or you could direct impact with it, but there was also the added functionality where if you held down the trigger, you could actually choose when the grenade exploded. Along with that, this would also release an EMP charge, which would disable vehicles or remove shields. I found the dynamics of the grenade launcher a lot of fun to use, both in Halo Reach and Halo 5, even if I personally had some difficulty killing people with it in arena games. It would definitely be a cool addition though to big team battle, and I do think it could also be a pretty fun power weapon in your arena style maps. Obviously we already have something that kind of has bouncing effects with the cinder shot, but I think the grenade launcher is different enough and it's human in architecture instead of the forerunner gun like the cinder shot that I think they would be different enough to warrant having both in the game. Barton laser introduced in Halo 3 was my personal favorite weapon when I was younger. Today, it still remains as my favorite I win button in gaming for several reasons. First of all, as soon as you charge this baby up, it will instantly delete vehicles and infantry alike. You hit a tank with it, it's gone. You hit a Spartan with it, you send him straight to Valhalla. This thing was a killing machine. While the Halo Reach through Halo 5 iterations were nerfed a bit, they still remained quite powerful. The other reason I love the Spartan Laser so much is it is actually also a psychological weapon. Now most people don't mention this, but the designator beam, whenever you're charging up the weapon, it fires a flickering red beam that warns enemies when you're about to fire it. And while the intent is to offer some weapon balancing, it often just scares people. Like anytime I see a beam flickering around my Warthog, I panic and I bail out of that thing. People have talked about how the skewer from Halo Infinite mirrors this weapon. And while I do like the skewer, I kind of miss the Spartan laser and the terror it could instill in big team battle matches back in the day. Next up we have the beam rifle. Now the beam rifle is nothing super unique in terms of weapon design. It is literally just the covenant version of the sniper rifle that instead of having a magazine just has an energy bar that overheats if you shoot it too fast. The beam rifle has also made its appearance in plenty of other halos. It was introduced in Halo 2, came back in 3, was obviously in ODST, also was in Halo 2 anniversary anniversary and in Halo 5. So the beam rifle has definitely seen a lot of play throughout Halo's history. Now like I said, the beam rifle itself design wise isn't anything special. Just like the sniper rifle, it's one shot to the head, two shots to the body, one shot melee, all of those things stayed the same with the beam rifle, but the cool thing about the beam rifle was just the fact that it was fun to use. It sounded a little bit different than the sniper rifle, you obviously didn't have to reload it, and it just felt satisfying to use the beam rifle. Now currently Infinite does have a 
second sniper rifle in the form of the shock rifle but i think the beam rifle would be a really good addition especially if we were to get a team snipers playlist as the beam rifle in previous iterations allowed you to carry around the sniper and the beam rifle when playing team snipers and that allowed you to hit some pretty cool clips as you would swap back and forth between the sniper rifle which you had to reload and the beam rifle which could get its energy back while you didn't have it out as your primary weapon honestly i'm just a sucker for the design and the sound of the beam rifle i mean just listen to this thing I mean, after listening to that, how could you not want the beam rifle in Halo Infinite? Remember Halo 4? <laughs> Me neither. The sticky detonator from Halo 4, I definitely remember though. It was simply legendary. It's got an awful fire rate, low range, and just terrible utility, which made it an instant favorite of mine. Now, despite these issues, the weapon does have an insane damage output and remotely detonating sticky explosives which turns this thing into a meme machine. <laughs> and boy, do I got a soft spot for meme weapons. Also, I don't know if y'all remember, there was a Halo 4 game mode that was only sticky detonators and plasma grenades. Halo Infinite needs more ridiculously chaotic modes that are nothing but stupid fun. And no, I'm not talking about Fiesta. That's a literal hellscape. That's why I suggest we bring back nobody's favorite weapon. All right, guys, and last but not least, now Nico's obviously talked about a notable exclusion from Halo Infinite, and that was the OG shotgun. And with that, I'm gonna bring you the other notable exclusion, and that is the classic Halo Magnum. Now, I could be fully serious here and talk about just bringing the regular Magnum back from maybe Halo 5, or even the version from Halo 3 or 4, as the Magnum has gone through a variety of different designs and functionalities but for the fun of it, we're going to talk about bringing back the CE Magnum in its full glory. Now, the CE Magnum was obviously in Halo CE, and then it came back in Halo 5 as a power weapon. The CE Magnum, obviously, is just a lot of fun to use. It is a three-shot kill, but it also rewards skill as if they brought it back with CE functionality. You would have to lead your shots on people that weren't super close. I think this would add a cool layer of skill, and you could bring it back as a power weapon on specific maps, or maybe instead of fighting for a sniper rifle top mid, you fight for the CE Magnum. Sure, that isn't a traditional power weapon in terms of kind of what you would think of a power weapon, like a sniper rifle or a rocket launcher, but the CE Magnum is so iconic to Halo and so nostalgic that I think having players fight over it and use it effectively in matches would be a lot of fun, and heck, even if it didn't work out purely as a power weapon on arena maps, it would just be fun to use in BTB, in customs, in social, in fiesta, and I would love to see the classic CE Magnum Magnum come back into Halo Infinite with its beautiful design, beautiful sound. I think every longtime Halo fan would love to see the CE Magnum back, even if it's purely for nostalgic reasons, and that's why I wanted to bring it up in this list, and I think it would be a lot of fun to have the Magnum back. Now everyone, that's going to do it for the 10 weapons that me and Nikos think should be brought into Halo Infinite. All of these weapons that we've chosen are a lot of fun and have a lot of nostalgic value throughout Halo's history, and I think would be a good addition in terms of playing some fan service for older Halo fans, and also just cool additions to the sandbox for the newer fans. Sure, some of these that we talked about have a little bit of overlap with existing weapons in the Halo Infinite sandbox, but the cool thing about Halo is not every weapon needs to be on every map. You don't have to have a sniper rifle and a beam rifle, which maps in previous Halo did not, or you don't have to have a grenade launcher and a rocket launcher or anything like that. What's so fun about Halo and having all these different weapon setups on maps is you can make each game feel fresh and unique, and you can make maps feel completely different just by varying up the power weapons that are on them. That though, guys, is going to do it for the video make sure you go over and toss nico's a sub he's an awesome dude and i really appreciate his help with this video we also if you were there recorded all this footage the other day on mcc in the discord it was a ton of fun everyone was having a blast we we're all yelling at each other in discord so make sure you join the discord if you want to be a part of future play sessions like that other than that though make sure you follow me over on twitch i stream tuesdays thursdays and saturdays and along with that you can also follow me over on twitter or instagram and with that said i'll see you all next time